Hello everyone, good day for Epic News. This is Marcelo Palermo. Well, COVID-19 has already surpassed the 12 million cases, not active, but the 12 million cases since early this year. We are already in July and we keep on going strong with COVID-19. The United States of America, over 3.5 million approximately uh, of cases, but the death toll somehow has been hitting uh, flat earth, we can say it that way. We were predicting if it would be to be a worse situation, that unfortunately the number of deaths or the death toll will be on its way to reach the 1 million cases and it's over 555,000 cases. We hope it doesn't get any further. That's everybody's wishes. But recently we heard, uh, we received a news about the breakthrough in China and its borders of a new virus, a new disease that, according to what we heard about the report, is twice as deadly as COVID-19. Obviously, the world is not ready to receive those kind of news or to receive a wave of another pandemic situation. So, if something happens, and at least now we are getting to get the news regarding that uh, in early stages, uh, what we have to hope is for the best and for the world to take action beforehand so we don't have another outbreak, another pandemic situation, add insult to the injury, we should say it, as they call it in the noble sweet science sport of boxing. Now we're going to talk about a case that not many international media actually are paying quite attention to. And for some, there's other reasons than the real reason, which is that it is a case that it has to evolve in informative content. But we have the information about what happened to a wonderful, beautiful, promising young lady, 20 years old, Vanessa Guillen, in Fort Hood, Texas. Unfortunately, she was last seen alive back on April 22, 2020, this year. It is said that uh, the accused of having killed her was uh, Aaron David Robinson, a black man who was a soldier at Fort Hood and whose wife, an Hispanic lady whose name was Cecil Ann Aguilar, was the one who actually collaborated with him dismembering and burying the body, trying to hide the body from a scene that could be uncovered. Finally, the body was recovered. Unfortunately, it was identified as Vanessa Guillen, who died. But after the George Floyd situation, lots of people tried to link the Vanessa Guillen case to the race card and this whole situation that has been dividing uh, not only our nation, but the rest of the world in trying to have a common cause regarding what? It has to be done when somebody who's a person who doesn't deserve, obviously, uh, to be a victim of injustice, of a crime, to die, or just to be the victim, uh, happens to die and happen his life or her life, in this case, her life happens to be thwarted. In the case of Mrs. Um, Vanessa Guillen, she was a promising young lady. She wanted to serve her country. She was a soldier in the U.S. Army, and she was a specialist in uh, Fort Staunton, a new soldier. And what happened to her was disgraceful. But make no mistake, these things have nothing to do and should have nothing to do with ethnicities. And again, stop saying race, because there is only one race. I'm not going to get tired of repeating this over and over again, which is a human race. As a social anthropologist, you see, I have to mark the differences. So you all learn, everybody, we all learn and understand that we are one race, one species, and ethnicities are part of our colorful diversity as humans. Unfortunately, two bad humans, as far as we know, have participated, one killing Mrs. Guillen and the other one, the one killing her is soldier Robinson, and the other soldier Robinson, Mr. Robinson's alleged uh, girlfriend, Mrs. Cecilana Aguilar, was responsible for helping him, hiding the body, so, she is considered as part of the crime, and her crime might be punished along with as much as 20 years of incarceration, which is what prosecutors are seeking. So we have two bad people here, 
one committed suicide, who's the guy who allegedly killed Mrs. Vanessa Guillen? I don't David Robinson. There's no such thing as asking for others to go out and start, doing, start destroying private property, burning down police headquarters, burning down uh, parts of Fort Hood that somebody, or some people actually claim, or closing the base. What we need is to live up to the circumstances and bring justice. Justice should be served. At least that much. Vanessa's family deserves, Vanessa deserves it. Everybody who's a victim of an injustice deserves for justice to be served. This guy around David Robinson, well, cowardice after committing a horrible crime took him to take his own life. Now, his alleged girlfriend, also a private, also a soldier, Cecilia Aguilar, is now under custody behind bars and waiting for a verdict. It will take some time because the justice system, bureaucracy, gets into the whole play, gets into the whole thing. And it's quite painfully uh, procrastinating, we can say it that way. Why? Because every time you have a case like this, and we were referring recently in a new show to the case of David Crucius, which is the guy who's the guy who drove all the way from Dallas to El Paso, Texas, uh, almost a year ago to commit a horrible crime to open fire against people that he thought were invaders because they were Mexicans or Hispanics from Mexico. He just was trying to figure the whole thing out and was trying to uh, put in, you know, on doubts in his twisted mind. And all that responds again to ignorance. Mr. David Cruz is probably who recently had an interview with a candidate for district attorney here in El Paso, Mrs. Yvonne Rosales, who by the way is leading leading uh, the polls, she might as well be the next district attorney, and that will be decided and will be known after July 14th, the day of elections, because uh, recently we had uh, the period of early voting ending, but what they told us, what she told us, and what many experts in law told us is that such a case might take around, we will say, a year to two being resolved to finally get to the point where we reach a very event, the very it is many sure and we can rest assured about this, not favorable <laughs> at all for this guy Patrick Crucius who committed a horrible, atrocious crime in the region of the southwest of Texas, to be more precise, at a Walmart in East El Paso. But all these things come actually from ignorance. Humans are vitally ignorant, unfortunately, about what is to be humans. That's why we divide. That's why we don't understand. That's why when we refer to Latinos, Hispanics, Anglos, uh, Italians, uh, Greeks, French, we mix things up. We don't get it. Well, recently uh, in Argentina, they celebrated July the 9th, the day of the declaration, not the declaration, the solidification of independence, which happened in Argentina in 1816. And actually, not many people know the pivotal consequences of such an event. Don José de San Martín, a man of tremendous military experience, a true commander, probably and arguably the best or one of the best in all of the American revolutions from the one that happened in the United States of America in 1775, 1776, and all the way until in 1783, the independence was gained to the revolutions in Latin America started mostly in 1810, with the exception of Haiti, which was, Haiti was the first country to gain its independence after expelling Napoleonic forces from the island, from the island that was once known as La Española, the Hispanic one, the one that Christopher Columbus arrived at. That was actually the kickstart of the colonization of the American continent hmm? back in 1492. We're connecting many dots and we do not intend to have a history lesson here because we will have to extend for hours probably. I will have to have a week-long program and I don't know how many of you will be willing to listen to me for a whole week. But in this condensed program we have to say that humans have to understand that we all interact. In the American continent we have many last names that are actually, or most of our last names are actually or were actually originated in Europe. And many people don't know that the interaction of European peoples made them all pretty much alike. 
with different white skin tones, uh, Caucasians, as somebody called uh, most of the people with white or fair skin, when Caucasian is actually one part of the European, the European big and broad community, right? But if you think about it, two tones, Merovingians, Spaniards, uh, Iberians, we can say, Gauls, Welsh, Irish, English, Romans, uh, Russians, uh, everybody interacted through gold times. Since ancient times, and all the way to, well, still nowadays. Just think about this. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't have been a kingdom of Spain, a kingdom of England or the British King or British Empire or uh, Germany as we know it or Italy as we know it or uh, Russia as we know it or Portugal that was also a great empire, the Portuguese Empire if or shouldn't they have interacted all, you know? For example, if you know the story of Catherine of Aragon, Catherine of Aragon, who was a mother of Bloody Mary, was uh, what they call princess and the night queen of England, her daughter Mary, or Bloody Mary, was a queen of England. You also have Charles, uh, Charles from Hanover, who was the king of Spain, of German descent, because they all interacted. You know, a uh, very funny way, an easy way to understand the similarities is when you see Galician people dressing with nilts, with kilts, I'm sorry, and playing the bagpipes, or what they call them, gaitas, the same way you see it in Wales, or in Scotland in England, and well, the same way you see it also in some parts of France, the Gallias, or the French Gauls. You're talking about same people moving around different places. You're talking about the fact that the Celts or the Celts lived in the British islands and also in Spain and also in France and moved through all the way to Germany and Germany had peoples moving from the Nordic countries, back and forth, forth and back and they interacted with everybody. And some of them get into Russia. And the Ross people, which was the origin of the Russians also, interacting with others. Germans settling in the Bulgar region. And eventually Europe is a mismatch also of different peoples. Whites, yes. Some of darker complexion, some of uh, lighter complexion, but all Europeans. Some blonde, some brunettes, what we have is human beings. And yeah, if we go back in time, again, back to the ancient times, somehow we have to understand that our kickstart as a species was, or we know at least up to now, that it was around the Ethiopian area, Africa. We took thousands of years as a species to get out of Africa and start living in places such as Europe. And then currents of migrations move all around to Asia, even to the Americas, or what we know today as the Americas, our continent. You see, the interaction between humans was so huge and so complex that if we don't understand migrations, we don't understand human history, anthropology, the history of humanity. We need to do that and we need to move forward because when we get to understand that, we get to understand the complexity of being human, of human beings. And the fact that when we interact with each other, we're not interacting with some weird, different species from another planet. We're doing it with brothers and sisters. Because there is, again, I have to say this, to end and wrap up this comment, this mini news show, there is no such thing as different human races. There is such one race, there is only, I'm sorry, one race. And such races, the human race, different ethnicities, all departing from a common point, from a common dot, and going all over to populate the world and to be the complex, miserable, and glorious species that we are today. Everything, everything in one species, all compacted. We're yin and yang after all. That Asiatic concept of yin and yang, the bad and the good the light and the dark is a perfect concept to define the human race and we got to understand that so please whenever something happens make it about what's fair and what's not stop making it about race ethnicity
Stop making it about ethnicity. And stop making it about ghettos and dividing people, putting the reds with the reds, the yellows with the yellows, greens with greens, blue with blue, white with white, black with black. It doesn't work that way with humanity. We are all in together. This mothership called planet Earth. And as long as we get to understand that, we have a good future. Or at least we have the chance to construct, to build a good future. If we don't, well, hey, we had a good run, didn't we? For all the mistakes that we made. But let's try to make that run a little bit longer. Way, way, way longer than what it was up until now. We're not such an old species. Considering that dinosaurs ruled the earth for millions and millions of years. We as Homo sapiens have been here for like around 300,000 years. As a species working in two legs, walking in two legs, we can count ourselves in around seven million years and going forward. But as Homo sapiens, we're quite new in this house. Big, enormous, rounded sphere, this planet called planet Earth. A planet that is, check this out, 4.8 billion years old. For Epic News, this has been Marcelo Palermo. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, check us out. Give us a like. This is Marcelo Palermo and Alvaro Galdos, Epic News. We have way more for you. Way more new things. Great things coming up soon, next, very soon. Remember, with the news, the intelligent, smart way. You all have a great day.